What's up guys, welcome back to brand new Dead Race Devlog. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you the progress I've made so far on my AI. And it's actually pretty good progress and I've worked really hard this week. First off, I'm going to be showing you guys the AI collision avoidance, which I have added and copied from a really nice YouTuber, which I'll put his link down below. And his tutorials are like brilliant. Next, literally next level. So I'm just going to copy and paste a few blocks here. Just give the enemy a bit to avoid. And then let's press play. Now let's watch. Look, as you can see, it's ray casting. Basically, it ray casts, and depending on where the ray cast lands, it turns this, it turns this wheel towards there. As you can see, it's very, it's avoiding everything, even though it's kind of scraping there. That's not really that important. As you can see, it keeps going. Now let's move. Safe we just put. As you can see, it it will like avoid anything. It doesn't break though, so if you do put it like right here, well, obviously not there. But say, say if you were to put one like right on top of him, he doesn't know how to reverse and go around it. Which I'm not really sure how I would add that code. It'd probably be very complicated. But let me show you the code that is currently working though. Okay, so here we have the code. Basically, if you guys have, if you guys have ever made a gun in Unity, that's basically what you do here. But instead of using the fire stuff, uh, like a direction, you just use fire towards. You use fire towards a obstacle in front of you, and depending where it is, you get the the car to turn the wheel towards there. Like for example, here, and then this avoid multiplier is basically what will turn the wheel left or right. And then when it's avoiding, it won't steer here because otherwise it will just keep following the track. So if if it's avoiding it, it will go off the path, and then once it's not avoiding anymore, it will go back onto it. So here's like this extra code here is all for like the shooting, which I will show you guys in a second you create a great cast and then so here you're just setting that position you're so here you're just setting the vector tree equal to the position of the car and then here you're moving the sensor forward so it doesn't collide with the collider and then here you're moving it upwards because otherwise it will just scrape on the ground and that's not the best way to do it so here you just move it up a certain set number here which is another vector tree that you use to set the position then as i said before the void multiplier will just it'll basically just ensure that the wheels are getting turned in the right direction and then avoiding one will basically just make sure that you're not steering or following the path anymore and then the shooting one will enable the shooting which i will show you guys in a second so then here you go if physics.raycast sensor position which is going to be the position of the raycast then you transform it forward, and then if it hits something inside the sensor's length, which is what you set in the inspector, I have mine set to like set to 10. So that will basically make sure that the sensor won't just fly out infinitely, because otherwise it will just keep drawing it until it hits something. Well, it, it'll actually keep drawing it even after it hits something. So, and then if it hits an obstacle, which is a tag in Unity, as you can see, tag equal obstacle, it will then debug dot draw line so it'll draw the line inside so i can see it being drawn in the scene and then it'll turn on avoiding equals true which will stop the steering from happening and then avoid multiplier will turn the wheel um this is probably to the left i think or to the right to the, i think to the left probably but this will turn it a bit because it, it only hit the right angle so it only hit the one that's angled to like the right here it, and it's not hitting straight on for this one which it hits straight on the right side of the car it will turn the, the wheel fully and then basically all the other ones are copy and paste and then the only one that's different is the front sensor because it will need because if it hits it straight on the front sensor it will need to calculate the closest way or the best direction for it to turn so if hit equal obstacle so up here it's the same stuff but then if hit obstacle collider, debug dot draw line, so it draws a line again in the scene, and then avoiding equals true to stop it from steering. Then down here, if hit dot normal x equals greater than equals greater than zero, it will avoid multiplier minus one. Or if it's equal to less than zero, it will avoid equal one. So basically, it will either turn the wheel right or left. That's basically all that does. Then as you can see, 
if it's avoiding, it will basically add, it will, most, it will multiply the max steering angle, which is the maximum amount of angle which the car wheel can go. Multiply that by the avoid multiplier. And then the car will turn. That's basically all it is. It's not, it's not really, it's really not that difficult. But I would do recommend you guys go watch the guy's video down below because it's so good. It's so good. It's, it's like a four part video. You will come out of it knowing exactly what, what you've done. So I would really recommend you guys do it. Okay, so next thing that I've added is, let me put out my controller. Where's my controller? Turn on my controller. I got my controller here. I can go pew. As I, and as you can see, it now instantiated bullets on the block. As you can see, there's bullet holes on the actual obstacle. And it will actually, like, depending where it hits, it will actually change the thing. Because it, the way I do it is basically it's two raycasts at once from either side of the car. Because the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to have a machine gun on top of the car. And I'm basically just going to have it, like, instantiate bullets. Because I'm using raycasts, it doesn't actually, like, shoot out bullets. So it's, it's just going to be a muzzle flash. And I'm probably going to keep the, the actual bullets at the same, like, at the same height and everything. But I'm just going to have it look like it's firing from the machine guns on top of the hood. And basically, if you shoot the cars enough, it will kill them eventually. This one has like, it has, six, it has 50, 46 health, so it takes forever. It will take 25 shots to actually kill them. But I'll probably increase that in the actual game and make it like a four hit thing. Because you'll, you'll only have this power up for like three or four seconds. So it's going to be really fun to use <laughs> and it's going to be very limited to use. So it won't get annoying for the other racers. So yeah, that's basically the plan for that. And let's show you guys the code. Took me a bit to actually get to figure it out because I was trying to do it through actual bullets because I was being stupid and I, would, and I thought you could do it the same way that you do it in 2D, but you cannot. Here you need to use Raycast mostly. I'm, you can do actual objects for missiles, but that's literally it. Because the way, the way I'm going to do my missiles is I'm going to have this car here. It's going to have a... Once you're powered up with the missile, obviously, there's going to be a detect... It's going to... There's going to, This car is going to detect the closest car to it. And then it's going to fire the missile at that target position. And then if the target's there, it's going to hit it. If it's not, you've missed, basically. But yeah, let's show you the actual code I've done so far. Instead of the code that I'm going to do. So... Power-ups... Here is the fire. The reason I have it in fire is so I can call it in the a so I can call for the AI too. Because if if I if I decided in this shoot in this shoot um method, it wouldn't work properly. Because of the fact this shoot method is only called once you press the actual inputs on the controller or the keyboard. So it wouldn't work properly if I did it that way. Hence why I did it this way. Um okay, so Public void, fire, if time between shots less than or equal to zero, it will allow you to fire. Well, basically, allow it to, here it will set it back to the start time, which is like three seconds or whatever you set in the inspector. And then here it will create a raycast hit. I basically copy and pasted it from the code that I used for the other thing. So here it will play the muzzle flash. It'll play the muzzle flash. Oh yeah, I didn't show you guys the actual muzzle flash. As you can see, if I press my back key, my look back key, then fire, it'll actually muzzle flash. Now obviously it's not the way it's gonna look in that final game because there's no machine gun, but it basically just lights up the it just lights up the the lights. And it's just a visual indication to me that it's actually firing. So basically it's just a muzzle flash placed on the lights here. They are children of the shot, but it, it doesn't matter anyways. And then here again, children of the shot, as you can see, play. It just lights up the light. It's, it's basically just a light, really. It's, it's like a tiny effect. And that will give the impression to the gamer, to the gamer, that he's actually shooting something. Because you, you, you don't ever see a bullet fly anyways, because it's always too fast. And most games use brace cast in 3D anyways. Okay, so back to this. As you can see, I play the muzzle flash. And then 
this mod and then this start length is because I use groups. Just make everything easier for myself and to add a bit of variety. And then here again I draw the raycast. If raycast hits something inside the range, it will then print out the target hit name. And then it will get to target hit dot component dot target, which is this script over here, which basically just has the health and the take damage. And then if target not equal null, because you need that, because otherwise it will freak out and it will ruin your game. <laughs> because it will basically just detect everything. Basically, if you don't include this target dot equal null, it will then try and call this. It will not work. It will send out an error and you'll get a bunch of red lines in your console. That's basically what will happen if you don't include this line. That one line probably caused your entire code to fail. So just make sure to always use a not equal null in your code if you need it, obviously. And then here it, it will instantiate the bullet. It will instantiate that bullet effect. And then I also use a, ran, a random range for it because I wanted to add a bit of variety to it. So basically the problem I was having here was that it was it had this line. But it would basically just instantiate it on the target. But the cars move. So so as the transform of the car changed, the bullets would just stay in the air. So in order to fix it, I basically had to make the impact dot target or the impact game object, sorry, equal to the parent dot hit transform. So basically as the car moves, the bullets will stay on it. And then I destroy it after the bull impact time. Uh, and then here it's just copy and paste basically. It's the same same code, literally same code. And then if and then this kind of adds an impact to the car. Or it will it should add an impact to the car, but because the fact all my objects are so heavy, it doesn't do anything. But I could increase that and make it fun. So I have it in there, just in case I need it. But yeah, that's basically it, I think. For this week's work, obviously it's a bit slower than I would like, but I do have actual like projects to do for my actual game development course, so I can't work on this 24-7. Hopefully during Christmas I'll be able to get finished. As you can see, my car gets stuck there. I'm probably gonna have to add a... See, because I already have reverse one, and reverse is just minus. Basically, I just add a timer to the front one. And if it's like drawn on there for too long, it would just reverse. And then it will reverse for like a second. And then it will drive forward again. That would work. That would solve my problems. And I didn't actually show you guys that the AI can fire, but I promise you it can. Let me just move this out of the way. There you go. And then let me drive in front of the AR. As you can see, you saw a flash. He fires. That is basically caused by the AI car power ups. No, not power ups. It'll be in the AI path finding. And then basically what happens is once shooting is set equal true. It will then call the game object dot com. It will then call the power up stuff fire method and it will fire and it will blow you up. And that's why I had to do it twice. You see. Yeah, but that's basically it for this video, I think. Hope you guys did enjoy. If you did, make sure to slap the like button, subscribe and share. And I'll probably have a Need for Speed, whatever the new one is called, review out very soon. So yeah, make sure to slap the like button, pre subscribe, because I'm losing subscribers somehow. I don't know how I'm losing subscribers. I'm, I'm forever called the four, I'm actually for 400 subs Andy right now. <laughs> so I need those subs. I would, 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 I would really appreciate. And yeah, so like, subscribe, and share. And this is your boy, Vinakul, cool, and I'm reporting out. And I don't know why I'm riding. First day, like my guys, and first time.